Hello, my name is Laura Baker. I'm from Wake Forest University School of Medicine. And I'm here today to talk to you a bit about exercise and what we know from science about its role to help protect brain health and possibly prevent Alzheimer's disease. This kind of trial with exercise, it's the kind of work I've been doing for the last 25, 30 years trying to understand whether there's a, that whether exercise should be part of the risk uh, modification uh, prevention strategies uh, for our older adults who are at greater risk for developing dementia. In November 2019, the Wall Street Journal produced this publication talking about the different ways that individuals could uh, take some control, possibly to reduce their risk of developing cognitive decline and Alzheimer's disease. And the kinds of ways, kind of activities uh, that were described in this particular article was taking control of your blood pressure, increasing exercise, staying mentally challenged, uh, eating a healthier diet, improving your sleep quality, or some combination of these. This is really important because this is really the first time that this kind of publication had been disseminated to the general public. And these recommendations for what we can do to hopefully reduce our risk is in line with what the recommendations from the World Health Organization as well. The World Health Organization um, provides a few additional factors that can be controlled possibly to reduce risk. One of the factors that's key uh, in the World Health Organization recommendations is exercise, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. So we know a lot about exercise. Folks have been studying this for a very long time. We know that it reduces stress, it improves your mood, it has positive effects on the heart and on the vessels. It can reduce the bad kind of cholesterol and inc increase the good kind of cholesterol. It reduces your risk of type 2 diabetes. It helps to reduce obesity. And in the last 20 years, I think what's really so exciting for us as a scientist uh, and, and interested in brain health is that we're starting to learn what regular exercise might do to protect brain health as we get older. There's lots of different reasons why exercise might protect the brain as we get older. And, and it's not only just protecting the brain and cognition, but our hope as a scientist who cares about finding a strategy to prevent Alzheimer's disease is the hope that exercise might actually prevent or stall the onset of Alzheimer's disease. So the way in which that might work, what, you know, different mechanisms that have been proposed has to do with what we see uh, in terms of how exercise helps the actual brain cell. It has neuro repair properties. It can help brain cells withstand insult. It makes brain cells less vulnerable to other injuries. Exercise reduces oxidative stress in the brain. It reduces inflammation in the brain. It improves glucose metabolism, the primary fuel that we need for function in the brain. And then in the last 10 to 15 years, there's some uh, scientific evidence showing that regular exercise is associated with less Alzheimer's pathology in the brain. So it may help with clearance of these critical neuropathological elements that can lead to Alzheimer's disease. So what do we know so far about effects of exercise in the brain? Well, we know from observational studies in humans that aerobic exercise in particular is associated with higher cognitive function. That is, those who exercise regularly tend to score higher on cognitive tests. We know that people who complete regular aerobic exercise have a reduced risk of cognitive decline in Alzheimer's disease. It has positive effects on brain volume uh, and Alzheimer's biomarkers and it has favorable effects on our gene expression. That's great for observational studies, but really the true test is what happens in randomized controlled or clinical trials. So there's, uh, up to now, there's been a uh, few uh, smaller uh, randomized controlled trials uh, in humans, uh, looking in short, mostly short duration, less than 12 months, uh, looking at whether uh, exercise or some control can have benefits for cognition in older adults. And there are some preliminary results indicating that, yes, uh, that it may, be, it may in fact be able to improve cognition or protect against decline. I want to tell you about one particular study. This was a study that was completing about 150 older adults in Champaign-Urbana, Illinois. And this was uh, older adults who are cognitively normal. 
they were uh, assigned to either a higher intensity aerobic exercise uh, group or a stretching and balance group. And what I want to show you here is uh, the colors that you see on the screen uh, indicate uh, colors where the aerobic group showed increased volume relative to the stretching uh, and, and balance group. And the blue, the one color is more with the brain cells in particular, and the, the other color is more with the white matter or the, um, that, that, that supports those brain cells. So anyway, this, this particular finding that exercise, no medications, exercise can increase volume in healthy older adults, uh, even in as short as six months, really did inspire the field to take a look at what might happen is there some hope then for exercise as a therapeutic option for people with cognitive impairment? Because of these results, there were a number of new studies that were published soon after that uh, began to investigate that very question. Nicola Lautenschläger uh, in 2008 showed that people with cognitive complaints could actually benefit. They showed improvement in cognitive scores following uh, six months of exercise, and we have shown similar things in our work. One study that I wanted to tell you about was one that we completed uh, a, a little while ago, but uh, it, it is one of the studies that did uh, evolve out of the study that was completed in cognitively normal older adults by the Champaign-Urbana and Illinois team. Our question was whether aerobic exercise could be medicine for people who have mild cognitive impairment. So this was a six-month randomized controlled trial where participants were assigned to either aerobic training or stretching and balance. Uh, both groups uh, had a trainer that worked with them and both groups exercised at a local YMCA. And we had multiple measures uh, that we collected from these individuals, including cognition. From that study, one of our results uh, was that uh, aerobic exercise for six months under the care of a trainer uh, did in fact improve cognition. And the particular uh, uh, aspect of cognition that improved was executive function. We did not see a change in memory for this in this uh, smaller study. In this study, we also uh, took pictures of the brain. We had um, magnetic resonance imaging uh, where we were looking at the volume of the brain and also blood flow. And what we found is for those, those folks who are in the aerobic group for the six months, we saw an increased uh, blood flow in the whole brain. And we also saw it in uh, different in specialized areas of the brain where we typically see declines in blood flow with aging and with the development of Alzheimer's disease. So this was very encouraging to us that aerobic exercise can actually change blood flow in the brain. Exercise, is it worth the trouble? Many different observational and randomized controlled trials, mostly small, as I mentioned before, have been completed. And the summary of a meta-analysis that was completed not too long ago was that uh, overall the conclusion is that there's more evidence for support of cognitive benefits uh, in response to exercise. I think the consensus in the field as of a few years ago is that this is still a worthwhile uh, avenue of investigation. But if you read the literature, the reports of exercise on cognition, the results are varied. Uh, sometimes you see benefits reported in response to exercise and sometimes no benefit. So how do we explain this? So what I want to talk about just for a minute is the, the role of dose of exercise. And you know, what role does that play in showing a benefit? These studies that we review in the literature, they tend to vary in their, how long the intervention lasted, what was the intensity of the intervention, how much monitoring there was of the intervention, how much support there was of the intervention. So these kinds of variables make a difference. Uh, if, you, um, if the frequency is low, the intensity is low, the exercise is not monitored, in, essen in essence, the dose is low. Uh, and, and we don't want to compare these kinds of studies to those where intensity is high, frequency is high, and they're highly monitored. So it makes a big difference. Um, what we know so far in our science is exercise trials of less than six months, they rarely show cognitive benefit. And that should make sense, given that we need more time uh, to repair the key biological systems that play a role in brain health. Um, and it's going to take time for exercise to repair those systems. What we also know is studies less than 12 months uh, generally show benefits for executive function, but not for memory. But it may be that we're not using the right tools to assess memory, um, or it's possible that we just haven't been looking at the effects of exercise long enough.
So what I'm showing you here are the results of our primary outcome. And our primary outcome was a global cognition score. What we do is combine all of the different scores from all the different tests to give us one measure. It gives us a good sense of how these people are doing in terms of their cognitive function. In this graph, I'm showing you a change from baseline. So change due to exercise relative to baseline before they entered the intervention. Scores that are higher are worse, they got worse. Scores that are lower are better, they got better. And so what, you're seeing a couple things here. Number one, there's no difference between the aerobic training and the stretching and balance. They are centered on the zero, uh, so no change from baseline. And what's important to note is that people with mild cognitive impairment, this is unusual. In people with mild cognitive impairment, we expect them to decline over time and we did not see any decline either with aerobic training or the stretching and balance. So to make sense of what we found, what we did is we compared our excerpt participants to a usual care group. That is people who did not receive any intervention at all. And we matched our participants to this other study. We, we got these participants from the ADNI study. Um, they're followed just longitudinally. There's, again, no intervention. So we found similar people uh, in ADNI that matched excerpt, and we compared them to see whether the ADNI folks would decline on our measure of global cognitive function, the ADAS COG exec. So this is what we found. What I'm showing you here is a similar graph where Higher scores mean worse, lower scores mean better, and I'm showing you change from baseline on our primary uh, composite score for cognition and excerpt. So there you see on the right the excerpt folks in blue. I'm just showing you that data two different ways. We're centered on zero, and this is for the aerobic group in particular. No change over 12 months for the excerpt aerobic group. And then when you look at the orange or the reddish grass, that's the ADNI group, you see that their, their scores on average are higher. That means they have, their scores have worsened. Remember, higher is worse. So this is over 12 months on the same measure. ADNI got worse, excerpt aerobic group did not. And we saw the same result in our stretching, balance, and range of motion. ADNI got worse, the aerobic stretching, balance, and range of motion group did not. We know that there's a history of work that's been done in observational studies uh, to suggest that regular exercise does make a difference for brain health. We have in the past a few smaller randomized controlled trials to suggest that yes, there is some signal, there is some benefit that we're seeing to suggest that exercise could be medicine. What I want to leave you with here are the results of the excerpt trial. Uh, for me, that are uh, important because it is, first of all, the longest, largest trial that's been conducted so far. It was a rigorous trial. Uh, these individuals were supervised. Uh, they had supported exercise. We had, they completed, as I said, over 31,000 sessions of exercise. So we know this trial was done very well. And what we found was that in excerpt, any amount of exercise that was supported, and that's a key word, that's supported. You cannot ask these people to do this on their own. So any amount of supported exercise of about 120 to 150 minutes over 12 months may slow cognitive decline uh, in sedentary older adults with mild cognitive impairment. What's really important for me is that we conducted this trial during a pandemic. Uh, where we were asking these people to continue with their exercise even when the world was shut down for a while and they were able to do this. So I think this has implications, uh, public health implications for how translatable this is to other situations in the future, uh, more difficult life challenges that these individuals will have to deal with. So thank you for allowing me to be part of this uh, today and I've, um, thank you for listening and uh, I appreciate your attention.